Hello, welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson number 62 from the Story, Song, and Action book. In this lesson, in a few moments, we're going to be learning about a new character named Winky Walrus, and so we'll learn his story and his song and his gesture, his sound, and his letter. Before we do that, we're going to do a bit of review. Our last character we learned about was Eve, and this is Leaping Eve. And Eve gets very impatient on her long walk to school each day, and she doesn't like having to go all the way around baseball fields and, and find a bridge to get across a stream and look for green lights and wait for, for those so that she can cross busy streets. So she wishes that she were like Wonder Woman and Superman, and she could just leap over the top of the streams and the, and the streets and the baseball fields instead of having to wait. So if you remember her story, what happened in her dream? While she was dreaming, she pretended like she was Wonder Woman and she believed she was Wonder Woman. And she leaped over the baseball fields and the streams and the city streets and got to school early so she had lots of time to play and read. Then when she woke up, she decided to try her new skill and she leaped over three green trees. But how big were the trees? Only about three inches high. So for Eve, we make our three trees like this Take our other hand, put it on our knee, and we leap from one knee to the other. And while we're leaping, we make her squeaky E sound and go ee up over the top. And if you can make it go way up into a high-pitched squeaky sound, do that. Eee. I'm sure you can go way up more than I can. And we also learned that most of the characters we're going to be learning from now on cannot spell their sound with just a single letter because we've almost run out of letters. So they have to use a pattern of two or more letters for their sound. So Eve most of the time spells her sound either with two E's or with an E and an A. Once in a while she uses an I and an E and at the end of a word she often uses just one letter Y to spell her sound. So to learn how we can use those letter patterns we drew some pictures and labeled them. So we drew a picture of a Jeep a B and a tree and cheese that all use two E's for, to spell Eve's sound. Then for her EA pattern, we drew a picture of a leaf and a seal. For her IE pattern, we drew a picture of a baseball field. And for the Y at the end of the word, we changed our word pup into puppy by adding another P and a Y to the end so that we can call it a puppy dog instead of just a pup. So let's do a little bit of playing with Eve's sound. Here we have a squash, and squash has the vowel sound of ah in the middle. But if we change that to e in the middle, what's our squash going to become? Squeesh. You try that. Squeesh. And if we have a banana with three syllables, banana, and we change it to all of those syllables to Eve sound, what's the banana going to be? B knee knee again ready say it with me B knee knee and if we put squ squish and B knee knee into apples and bananas how's it going to sing ready Eve likes to eat 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 squish and B knee knees say it, sing it with me Eve likes to eat 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 squish and beanie knees. Here I have a plum and plum has a uh in the middle for its vowel sound but if we change it to e it's no longer a plum. What is it going to be? See if you can say it before me. Pleem. And here I have a tomato with like banana has three syllables. Tomato. But if we change all of those syllables to e what's it going to be? T me T. We try it. T me T. And if we put that into apples and bananas, how's it going to sing? Eve likes to eat, eat, eat pleams and T me teas. Eve likes to eat, eat, eat pleams and T me teas. All right. Well, from our very first lesson, We've talked about if you're going to understand and remember what's being taught, 
you have to glue the new information that I'm teaching you to the old information that's already stored inside your head. So we're going to start by talking about some things so you can talk with your parent or your teacher um, about waffles. The waffles are going to be in our story and if you like waffles and when you might eat waffles and and what you like to have maybe on top of your waffles we're also going to be talking about walnuts and here's a walnut in a shell and here's what the walnut looks like when you take it out of its shell so maybe you like to eat walnuts we're going to talk about worms now do you like to eat worms probably not real worms but maybe if you have gummy worms like these, then you might like to eat worms. But which would be healthier? Eating watermelons and walnuts or eating gummy worms? So we can talk about nutrition. Um, we're also going to be talking about what you might put on top of things. And here's a can of whipped cream. And here's the whipped cream on top of some strawberries. So maybe you like to put whipped cream on some of the things that you like to eat. And because our character this time is a walrus, we're going to be talking some about walruses. And I really have a good time getting ready for these lessons because I get to learn a lot of information by reading and looking up information about the topics that we're go are going to be in our story. So here's some things I learned about walruses. And here's a couple pictures of walruses. And they live way up in the north where it's really, really cold. And they spend a lot of their time either in the water or resting on ice. And because the ice is very, very slippery, they have to have some way to climb up out of the water onto the ice. So they use their tusks. And their tusks are really just long teeth that never stop growing through the whole life of the walrus. And so you can see here with this walrus, he's kind of digging his, his tooth or his tusk into the ice and using it to pull himself up onto the ice. And they also use their tusks to help keep them from sliding off the ice. The favorite food of a walrus is a clam. And here's a, here's a couple clam shells. And clams are really hard to get open. And here you see the clam is open and you can see the animal inside. Well, if a walrus is going to eat that animal, it doesn't even have to open the, the clam shell. It has such strong suction, it can suck. And so it goes down to the bottom of the ocean, goes along the bottom, and it sucks up the clams, and it sucks the animal right out of the clam without even having to open the clam shell. And it's so fast that it can spend about 20 minutes underwater before it has to come up to take another breath. And in that 20 minutes, it can suck up between 3,000 and 6 thousand clams. So there's a good math lesson for you. Also, walrus is a really big animal. They're so big, they weigh between two and over, and many of them over 3,000 pounds. That's like as big and heavy as a car. And they have a thick layer of fat that helps keep them warm when they're laying on the ice or when they're diving under the water. Now their favorite food is clams, but they also eat what are called sea cucumbers and here's a sea cucumber and sometimes they'll eat octopus and they'll eat many other different kinds of foods while they're down there under the water. This is a fun story. It's actually more of a poem about walruses and it has a lot of fun little rhymes in it and it reads like this. The walrus has tough wrinkly skin and grows his teeth below his chin. So his teeth hang all the way down below his chin, and there's a picture of those long walrus tusks. He lives on beaches by the sea, near rocks that are slippery. And when the waves come in, they make the rocks very smooth. They get them all wet, and if you're not careful, and you're trying to walk on those rocks, they're slippery, and you can fall right off. When the walrus wants to swim, he holds his breath, and rolls right in. So there he is rolling into the water. And so this keeps going with some really fun little rhymes. Now it's fun to read a lot of books before going into the lesson. And if you practice all of your drawing and you practice all the 
letters and the sounds that we're working on there, you'll be able to figure out the words in most any book that you pick up after a while. And so here's a, a Skybrary book you could read about a walrus named Wally. And here's one that's kind of what a walrus faces from the time it's born. This is a puppy dog who's experiencing his first snow. And this is called Sam's Snowy Day. And he's not too sure that he likes being out in that snow. And that kind of goes along with the story that we'll be doing. Now I talked about our worms. Now, worms are very important to farmers. And this is a Skybury book called Worm and Farmer McGuire. And it gives us a lot of factual information about worms. That worms really help the farmer because as they're going through the soil, they dig up the soil and they soften it so that the roots of the plants that the farmer is growing can dig down and get nutrients out of the soil. So earthworms really help the farmer. And this is another book called Earthworms that gives more information about worms. This is a book about worms that when I was teaching third, fourth, and fifth grade, my students really liked me to read this story to them. And it's called How to Eat Fried Worms. And you probably haven't eaten fried worms. I don't think I would want to, but that's what this book is about. We also, when, way back when we were doing our ox, we learned about Paul Bunyan, who was a woodsman. And so there's going to be a woodsman in our story this time. And here's a woodsman with his axe ready to go out and cut trees to make lumber so that people can build their houses. And so that's going to be a part of our story today. We're also going to be talking about wishing. And this book is a Skybury book called Fish Wish. If you were a fish, what would you see? And what do you think you might wish for? So you can talk about that and then you can read the Skybury book um, to see what this wish sees and wishes for. So we're going to now get into our story about Winky Walrus. So here's our picture once more of Winky Walrus. Now, Winky Walrus lives way up in the north where he started his life, where he had to rest on the ice and he had to go down in the very, very cold water. And his very first winter was especially cold. And Winky decided he wanted to be where it was warm. And he heard, heard stories that if you travel to the south, the weather gets warmer and you don't have to face all of those that terrible weather. So he decided to just take off and travel south. And he traveled for weeks and weeks through the worst kind of weather until finally he came to an old wishing well. And as he went up to that wishing well, he turned the crank, pulled the bucket up with the water, and he began to wash his whiskers. And as he was washing in the wishing well, he was wishing for some clams, but there's no, really no clams in the forest where he was. But there are wiggly worms. So he was wishing for some worms. Well, as he was there, this woodsman came up and he saw how weak and weary Winky Walrus was. So the woodsman decided that he would feed Winky. So first he gave Winky some watermelon and Winky thought, oh, that's pretty good. Then he took out some waffles and he not only gave him a waffle, but he even put some whipped cream on top of the waffle and Winky thought wow that waffle with whipped cream that's pretty good stuff then he gave him some walnuts to eat and Winky enjoyed the walnuts but as Winky was eating the watermelon the walnuts and the waffles with whipped cream and the watermelon he began to see these wiggly worms coming up out of the wet soil around the wishing well that he had dampened by splashing water on his whiskers. And so as the water came out and the worms came up, Winky began to grab the worms and began eating the worms. And he decided that while he did like the watermelon and he especially liked the waffles with whipped cream and he liked the walnuts, the best thing were the wiggly worms. So now Winky has decided that he's going to live there by the wishing well. 
And whenever he gets hungry, he'll go to the wishing well and he'll wish for worms. So put your hands up like this, pretend like you're wishing. He'll wash his face. And as he keeps splashing the water on his face and washing his whiskers, the wiggly worms come up out of the soil and Wiggly Walrus has all the worms that he wants to eat. So whenever you see our picture of Winky Walrus, I want you to think about how he washes his whiskers and put both hands on your face like this and move them up and down and wash your whiskers and go, what? Or you can think of how he wishes and you can put your hands together like this and you can wish for something, maybe not worms, but you might be wishing for that watermelon with whipped cream. And as you're doing that, I want you to go wuh or wuh for Winky Walrus' sound. Now, if we put Winky Walrus into Are You Sleeping, we can figure out if it's a vowel or a consonant. So sing this t back to me. Are you wishing and washing? Are you wishing and washing? Winky Walrus, Winky Walrus, Winky's bells are saying, Winky's bells are saying, wing, wong, wing, wing, wong, wing. What kind of sound is that? Consonant. How do you know that? It had to have a partner. It had to have ing and ong to go with it. So winky sound is a consonant sound. So let's put winky sound into our song now. So let's warm our muscles up and I'll teach you the gestures to go for winky walrus. First, when a walrus walks on land or on the ice, it kind of waddles back and forth like this. So pretend to waddle and then we're going to make a well by putting our hands around like this to make that big round shape of the wishing well. Okay, so sing this back to me. Winky waddled to the well. Winky waddled to the well. Then you're going to show me wish, wash, wish, wash. Sing that back. Wish, wash, wish, wash. Now show me wishing again. And then you're going to show me wiggly worms like this. Winky walrus wished for worms. Winky walrus wished for worms. Now show me how wiggly they are. Wonderful wiggly worms. Now we need to make Winky walrus's W letter. So for that, we can put three fingers up like this, and it kind of looks like a W. W's for Winky. Now you can show me his whiskers like this, or you could show me his tusks hanging down like this. So you can either show me a walrus with whiskers wiggling or with tusks, okay? W's for Winky. W's for Winky. Now show me your worms again. And for the wiggly worms. And for the wiggly worms. Now show me washing. Winky washed his whiskers. Winky washed his whiskers. And wished for worms. And wished for worms. Wonderful wiggly worms. Okay, let's try that again. Ready? Sing it after me. Winky waddled to the well. Winky waddled to the well. Wish wash. Wish wash. Winky walrus wished for worms. Winky walrus wished for worms. Wonderful wiggly worms. Wonderful wiggly worms. Show me your W. W's for Winky. W's for Winky. And for the wiggly worms. And for the wiggly worms. Winky washed his whiskers. Winky washed his whiskers. And wished for worms. And wished for worms. Wonderful wiggly worms at the wooden wishing wells. So I did that last one wrong. Okay, let's see if we can do that along with our recording of Winky Walrus now. So start out by showing me how you waddle. Ready? Winky. Here we go. Winky waddles to the well. Wish wash, wish wash. 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 Wish wash
wish wash. Winky Walrus wished for worms, wonderful wiggly worms. W is for Winky and for wiggly worms. Winky washed his whiskers and wished for worms at the wooden wishing well. Hey, what's our what's our sound for Winky Walrus? Wuh or wuh, or you can go wuh and do, do both wishing and washing. So here's Winky Walrus's picture. And so after you do your rainbow writing on the front of your page, I want you to turn it over on the back and think of some things from your life that go along with Winky Walrus's story. So maybe you want to tell me about some of whether you like to eat watermelon or you like waffles with whipped cream or maybe you like eating walnuts or maybe you like gummy bears with with um that wiki walrus ate or maybe you like to go to the woods or if you came to a wishing well and you threw a coin into the wishing well what is something that you might wish for or you could tell me things that you can remember or that you know about a walrus on the back of your page. So draw a picture on the back of your page and either write a sentence or a story or wait for your teacher or your parent to come and write it for you and then you can rainbow right over the top of that. And then in our next lesson, we're going to be drawing a picture of a wishing well. And there's a sentence here that you can do to go along with the wishing well. And the sentence reads, Winky is by the well. So we'll be working with that in our next lesson. So I hope you enjoyed our story about Winky Walrus and I'll look forward to seeing you in our next lesson when we'll get to draw and label some things that use Winky Walrus's sound. So hope to see you then.